Hey guys, I'm uh, coming on here today because I watched a video um, earlier today by our brother Jeff Wilkins, and um, and some of you all who may know him know that um, he does have a small channel here on YouTube, but um, he had first started his channel because he had a couple of really powerful dreams from the Lord concerning the times that we're in. And, um, and I believe that he had these dreams back in 2017. And Jeff, you can correct me if I'm wrong, but he had had a dream about the new Madrid fault line. And of course, Jeff lives in Tennessee and I live in Kentucky. And, and right on the, the western edge of the border of our state where it borders with uh, um, uh, Missouri is where the epicenter of that earthquake went off back in the early 1800s of the New Madrid fault line. And they say that it even rang church bells in Boston. I mean, it was so heavy of a um, an earthquake that even the Mississippi River ran backwards for like three days, guys. And you think about how much uh, just a gallon of water weighs. Well, the big Mississippi River, think about what kind of power that had to have had to uh, um, to make that that turn around in its current where it's used to going down through the Gulf of Mexico and emptying out into it, into the sea, that it ran backwards, almost like going north, okay? So that's that's really a heavy kind of thing to think about. And, and I know that when I was taking geology classes back in college in the mid-80s that um, our professor had spoken on that. And um, his name was Professor Van Arsdale. And uh, you all may look him up. I mean, I'm sure he's all over YouTube. He still teaches, from what I understand, at the University of Tennessee. And um, uh, he speaks on the New Madrid. He was kind of like, you know how they pe they call people like the, the storm chasers, you know, that chase storms and everything. He more or less chased around earthquakes and epicenters and knew all about them. And I remember him saying to us um, back then, he said that the New Madrid was due to go off again, as most experts and geologists believe that it'll probably go off, he said, sometime in the next 15 to 25 years. And I was thinking, wow, you know, that's not long. And, and of course, here we are, guys. I mean, like, I've been out of college at least 25 years. So, I mean, I'm 54 now. And so I know that, um, actually, I've been out for over 30 years. But in either case, guys, that's, that's kind of what he was talking about was random anomalous animal behavior, things like that. And I've noticed a lot more beetles coming up out of the ground. I mean, my garage floor was kind of crunchy the other day with the beetles. And, and we've killed a lot more snakes than normal. You know, it, it does seem like that the animals and the, the wildlife that live underground, um, Maybe they are feeling more tremors and they feel it before we do that they're very sensitive to that. And so um, they're coming up out of the ground to let us know that something's not right. And uh, even the other day, I had a groundhog that he's kind of been camped out down by the creek in my far backyard. Uh, yeah, I even saw him last summer a few times and, and he's a big healthy thing and boy, he's not anymore. Um, he got in the fence line of my next door neighbor's house and they've got two dogs as big as Hannah, and um, that was not a good end for him. Uh, and the weird thing about it is we gave him a chance to escape. We distracted the dogs and um, gave him a chance to escape. And 30 minutes later, he came right back. And we, we did the old, uh, you know, escape route again for him. And he got away and he came right back again. So that's not normal behavior, typically, for an animal. Um, could there have been something wrong with him? Well, I suppose so, you know, but... Uh, Guys, I mean, like to me, I think that it's all gearing up to the time that we're in. That um, that when we get out of here, you know, it, it, it says that in the scripture that the Harpazo Raptura is a snatching out of harm's way. Like if you look back in the scriptures of what those words actually mean in the Greek Septuagint and in the the ancient Hebrew, and look at the writings, it it's it's as if it's a rescue. It's a snatching out of harm's way. Um, so in essence, could that be the event that's going off, you know, a, a, a large earthquake like that at the time that we're leaving or perhaps war breaking out? Um, yes, any number of these things. And plus the fact that if it were during their season of Pentecost or even on that day, it would be a big, big message to the Jews because, you know, they'll scramble for the scriptures then, you know, the ones who have their eyes open from that event will say, wow, you know, their church was conceived in the book of 
Acts, it says on Pentecost, because it says when the day of Pentecost had fully come, they were in the, in one accord, and they were together, and then the Holy Spirit fell upon them, and, and they began to speak in tongues, and the church was conceived, even so to where it was 3,000 um, members by the first evening. It says all those appointed to salvation um, were saved um, by hearing the message in their own native tongue. Um, so, and then, of course, those who mock and scoff said, oh, they're just drunk on the new wine. Well, um, we all know that not to be the case. And, and uh, if we were conceived on Pentecost, yeah, it would make sense that we leave then, too. It would to me. And I think it would also be a big message to um, the Jews because, let's face it, it's going to be the time of Jacob's trouble. Uh, and they didn't see him. They missed it the first time. They, they didn't realize that Jesus was their Mashiach. I mean, there's obviously been a few um, believers that have, have come to uh, Jesus that were Jewish, but, but um, by far the majority of them don't know. And uh, they're still waiting on Messiah. And so, guys, um, this is our time to be looking up. Uh, I know it to be the case, and uh, I don't know whether it's this year, this month, whatever. I mean, I don't think that um, any of us will ever be told, uh, you know, exactly the timing. But uh, if we're closer now than when we first believed, would it make sense that it is Pentecost? Yes, in many respects it would. And, and what does it say in the scriptures? It says to uh, study to find yourself approved, a workman that need not be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. And, um, and we are supposed to search out a matter. It says it's the glory of God to conceal a matter and the honor of kings to search it out. And if we are to be kings and priests ruling and reigning with him, then I think we, we should be trying to search out like how close we are and know that we're in the season and be awake to these things. And so... That's another reason why I know a lot of us sound like broken records over here. Oh, Jesus is coming, you know, and, and maybe so much so to where some just just don't believe. But the the mockers and scoffers will always be with us, according to Scripture. It says that uh, I believe that it was uh, Peter that said that that they will always be be with us, mocking and scoffing, saying, "Well, since the fathers fell asleep, you know, things have continued on." You know, I mean, so you know. They've been saying Jesus is coming for years. I've heard many people say that to me whenever I uh, try to tell them that that I believe that the Lord uh, told me that that He's coming back really soon, and um, and that was three and a half years ago. And uh, and I think that it was not just so that I would know, but so that I would tell others. And, um, and I think there are very, very many watchmen that are watching the signs and, and that the Lord has called them to do so because, um, what does it say in the scripture about that? It says, I have set watchmen on the wall, O Jerusalem, who will not hold their peace day or night. Yea, they make mention of the Lord and shall not keep silent. And I believe that's what's going on. And, and so until the voice of the messenger is taken away, like it speaks of in, in, uh, Jeremiah 16, 9, and also Revelation 18, 23. It says that the voice of the messenger will be gone, the voice of the bride and the bridegroom shall be heard no more at all in thee. Um, even in Revelation, it says that because thy great men were the, the through their sorceries deceived all the nations. And so, you know, we, we have been a superpower, as they say, for a long time. And um, and I believe that uh, that spiritually, if not physically and everything else, that, that America is Babylon that the scripture speaks of. But I think it's that whole beast system of the world. I think it can be those things at one time. I mean, think about in Revelation where you see the beasts. They always have like um, many heads, like ten heads, but, you know, or seven heads and ten horns, you know, things like that. Um, because it's, it's like the United Nations. It's like the one world uh, government. It's like the one world religion that coexist. Hey, let's come together these kind of things. And, um, and it's Luciferian in nature, guys, because um, uh, God says for us to put our trust in him and not in man or any government or things. And even so, he said to render unto Caesar the things that are Caesar's and to God the things that are God's. So I think that most people that are, that are God-fearing uh, Americans, yeah, I think that most of us do, like, pay our taxes and want to take care of our military and pay what we're supposed to pay. I don't think we're trying to dodge anything over here. And yet at the same time, you know, um, we got to realize that we're not friends with this world. We're not holding hands with this world. Um, 
it says to be a friend of the world is an enemy of God's. And so uh, we need to occupy and be about our father's business, try to do the best that we can on helping each other and lifting each other up. Um, I appreciate you all and, and all that you've done for us. Alex couldn't have that surgery on Wednesday morning because um, his blood pressure was up and he had a little bit of a low grade fever that he didn't even know he had. But this was not like a, um, uh, a life threatening thing. It was just the nerve damage that's in his hand that obviously is going to need to be fixed really soon because um, he can't feel most of his hand, you know, and he can't grip or lift the way he's supposed to. So that will need to be fixed. But it was very similar to like what a carpal tunnel surgery would be, or that's how they're going to fix the nerve damage that's been caused um, in his arm. So I'm sure that will be soon if the Lord tarries, and then maybe we won't have to worry about it at all. Um, and for those of you all who have helped us, I appreciate you so much. And, and I'll leave my information for those of you who can um, help. I think that those of us who are able to help, what, whichever way possible, should do so until the trumpet does sound. And um, and that's what I've always done to you guys. And, and even if I'm more on um, uh, in the position of needing help right now, I, I, I don't get that thing twisted. I've helped people as I can all of my life. And, and um, uh you know, sometimes it's not just about a, a collection plate or a tithing, but um, but it's about seeing someone in need and taking care of that need. What does it say? The Lord loves a cheerful giver and not to let our right hand know what our left hand is doing. And um, and I'd like to think that, um, that those are the things that I've been more aware of than I think the actual believer or the average believer is, I mean, over the years, because sometimes it's the people that can't make it to church because maybe they have um, someone who's a shut in or um, they have so many little children and they don't have proper, what they think is proper clothing to take them to church. Because let's face it, you know, like a lot of times the church looks down upon people when they, they don't dress well or they don't have a, um, you know, money to give in the tithing plate. And, uh, and I know it's, it's, it's a shame, but it's the truth guys. And, um, uh, and those are the people that need our help the most. And, and so thank you all, you know, for what you've done for us. And then, um, and then if you find anybody near you that you can help, you know, that, um, then please do so, especially if you don't have a church home, because I think many of us have come out of the church system, you know, and um, it used to be so easy, guys, to find the correct gospel to, uh, you know, at, where they preach Jesus more than philosophy of the world. And, and it's just not that way anymore. It's not as easy to find. So praise God for those who can, um, because it says, do not forsake the assembling of yourselves together, but such as a manner of some. I mean, we need fellowship and encouragement from each other. And, um, Thank you all for your prayers and, and know that I'm praying for each of you guys too and, and always list your prayers and concerns that you have um, on my channel and, and you can always share anything that I ever put out guys because I really believe that, that these will be some of our last messages or very possibly could be and so um, let's keep looking up um, and with prayer and supplication of all the saints and also um, tell somebody about Jesus today um, guys it's the ABCs it's acknowledging that you need a savior. Um, you know, they, you know, that the Holy Spirit convicts us, right? It says that if we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And that's in first John one, uh, and verse nine. And so, um, Basically, if, if they confess with their mouth and believe in their heart, the way Romans 10 verses 9 and 10 tells us, um, it says that confession is unto salvation as belief is unto righteousness. And the righteousness is imparted by Christ to, to the true believer. And we are born again at that point. It says all who call on the name of the Lord will be saved. And, and if we believe that he died on a cross for our sins, um, yes, for the whole world, but for us personally, too. Um, that he nailed our sins to the cross uh, and that God raised him from the dead three days later. Um, that's what it is, guys. That that's, that's the simple gospel that even a child can understand. And then, you know, the Lord gives us his Holy Spirit. He comes in and dwells in our heart. And that's, that's really the true message, guys, that we should be giving today. Um, you know, just like what Jesus said to Nicodemus, he, what shall I do? What can I do? You, know, you must be born again. But, but how can I enter my mother's womb a second time? And he's talking about the spirit, guys, the Holy Spirit. 
And I know that it was a new concept to the Jews back then because they were strictly under the law. They knew the do's and don'ts and, and that's really it. But so they thought a lot on the things of this world, the physical, like the flesh. They didn't know much about the rest of it, guys. They didn't know about, um, you know, that you're saved by grace through faith, um, and not of any works lest any man should boast, but it's a gift of God. It's a gift of salvation. And uh, that's in Ephesians chapter 2, verses 8 and 9. For those of you who would like to have a few verses together to speak to someone about salvation, then those are the ones that I use, and I think that they're really good ones. So if you guys, um, you know, have a certain message that you say to people when you're witnessing to them, then let me know. But I, I think that those are some really good verses to use as, um, you know, First John 1, 9, uh, Ephesians 2, 8 and 9, uh, and then Romans, of course, uh, 10 verses 9 through 13. So I love you guys. And, um, and thank you for everything again. And, um, and hang in there guys. I, I believe that, uh, um, really soon we'll be with our Lord Jesus. And, but until then, let's, um, let's do what we can to tell others about him. Okay, guys. So we'll have a lot more people join us and, um, I love y'all and I'm sure we'll talk real soon.